What's up, Faithful? Welcome to this very special episode of the 49er Faithful UK Live. As always, I'm your host, Paul Hope. And boy, do we have a show for you today. When we relaunched our YouTube channel about 18 months ago, it was a dream of mine to get someone like John Chapman on our channel. So I am pumped for this one, Faithful. Host of the awesome 49ers Rush podcast, John is one of my go-to content creators. His passion for the 49ers is contagious. And to be able to share that passion through his podcasts, our interactions on social media, and in person at the gold mine last year for the Buccaneers game means the absolute world to me. He knows I'm a huge fan of what he does, of the community he's building, and I am delighted, faithful, to welcome the one, the only, the legend, John Chapman to the 49er Faithful UK, baby. Let's get it, man. That that was an introduction, Paul. I freaking love it. And uh, very happy to be here. Excited to talk all things Niners, community, draft stuff. Uh, but every time we hang out, Paul, we don't miss, man. It's, it's We've only been together once in person, which is still awesome. That's a crazy feat in and of itself. But we're going to have a good show today, man. Yeah, like you manifested that, John. This time last year, you had me on your show and you said, boy, we are going to watch a game in, in, in person. And I thought, He's crazy because there was no way, John, that I was flying 5,000 miles at the time. And then Lee Gowland secured the gold mine. And then a few people booked on. And before you know it, I was reaching out to you and saying, see you in November. It was awesome, man. And that week was so cool. I had one of my coaching buddies, James, join me. I don't know if you remember him. He was awesome. And he was just like, man, these people are all so nice. And I was like, yeah, it, it's crazy. It, you know, you get about 50 of you guys, you knuckleheads together. And uh, y'all know how to party. So I uh, love the, you know, 49er Faithful UK and, you know, all, shout out to Lee and everything that he's done. He's just incredible. Such an inspiration. So let, let's do this. Let, let's let's get through this. I'm excited. Uh, I've been waiting on this one. So and I appreciate your patience because we were going to do this show earlier. But I was like, man, I got to finish this draft guide. Uh, once the draft guide's done, you're priority one. And so that's why we're here today uh, doing the show, which I'm excited about. Yeah, so you mentioned there, John, the draft. Now, I know we're officially into draft season and everybody and anybody is doing mock drafts, the release and draft guides. Now, before we get into all things draft, everybody, I wanted to chat to you, John, about the awesome community that you've built and what it means to you. Because as I've said before, you're an inspiration to what we're trying to achieve on this side of the pond. Now, I know the story. I know the background, but for some of the UK faithful who may have heard Paul Hope wax lyrical about this legend that is John Chapman, I just wanted to touch upon that before we went into the draft stuff, if that's okay, buddy. Yeah, yeah, it was weird because the way I got into this was just strange in and of itself. Uh, you know, football coach down in Texas, that was my career. Long story short, became a foster parent, couldn't spend the time that Texas football requires. I was sleeping in my office several times a week during the season. I couldn't do that anymore. So I had to give up the coaching career, which was weird. And I really struggled with kind of identity and purpose because I was coach. That's just who I was. Um, and my buddy was like, hey, record a show, you know, start a podcast. And listen, th this was eight years ago. So started recording. And then we made it to the Super Bowl in 2019. I didn't have near i didn't have very much money at all and i was like man let's let's try to create a place for people to get together we rented out a venue in south beach miami you know i was like man miami frank gore lives in miami let's see if we get frank gore out and i was like why not let's dream big and sure enough he came out and partied with us and the people came together and it was just like holy cow there is a need for this and it was just kind of like one of those light bulb moments where it was like we got to create an avenue space for people to get together. And then COVID hit. And so COVID happened right after that. And the, the plan was, man, let, let's start organizing events and getting people together. I don't know how many events we've thrown now, but it's well over 50. And so, you know, we travel with the team. We try to host a party the night before in a tailgate. 
That's kind of our go-to. It's just finding ways to get family environments together. That's so key. Just families together of Niners fans to have a good time and to build relationships. And I say this every, every event I've ever thrown. If you leave this event and you haven't made new friends, you have failed the 49ers. You have failed the community and you have failed yourself. It's all about building those connections. And it's funny because people always ask me like, oh, you're a content creator or whatever. I don't know what to call myself, um, but like it's relationships. We, we don't do this for money, even though that is part of it. This is how I you know, feed my family. It's all about getting these amazing people together. And that that's that's where we start and that's where we end. And anything we do that doesn't fit inside that, we got to reevaluate. That's my own personal opinion. No, I, I agree, John. I mean, I said to you off air, from when we relaunched our YouTube channel and last few weeks I've been talking quite highly about the go-to content creators that I watch, that I listen, because in the UK we don't have the wall-to-wall coverage of American sports. You know, I have to go and hunt on Twitter. I have to go hunt on YouTube. And similar to your story, we had a Super Bowl watch party for the first loss to the Chiefs and it was just right at the start of COVID. Then COVID hit, so all the plans that we had on this side of the pond. And I chuckled, I think it was a year ago, that you had me and Lee Gowland on your show, and you were talking about some of the stuff that we could do. And as I said, you manifested me coming and watching a game live with you. And what I did like is when we met in person, you were true to your word. As soon as I strolled over that car park in Levi's, you were like, Come here, Mr. Hall. Bear <laughs> hug. Your buddy must have been thinking, what's going on here? These two lifelong friends. And like you said, the relationship. My only regret that day was when the game finished, everybody has to go back home. It's kind of like, I wished we could have done yeah. something. And like I said to, to John, I was so jealous of Lee and the others flying up to Seattle because that is still something on my bucket list is to come to one of your events because I was back home in the UK at that point. So sitting at home, John, and watching them guys party with you and then walk into Seattle was just stuff of legends, man. It was pretty cool. And the fun thing is, like, it just keeps growing. And so many more people just come in and they they see it and it's contagious. I, I see great people in the chat like Ty and Lee and Colin and, like, y- Yohan. Like, it's awesome because there's so many great shows out there. And I, I hope everybody kind of finds their quote unquote show. Like I'm not a clickbait guy. I'm not a rumor guy. I'm not somebody that gets really upset too often. Um, and so that show's not for everybody. But the one thing I will say is like, we get the opportunity, you and me to get to know these people. Like I know these people in the chat. I, I've, I've seen them. I have shared drinks with them and food with them and memories with them. Kim, I see Kim and like that. That's huge. And so I'm very thankful. I, did, I say this all the time. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Because, like, I'm very thankful and grateful to be able to do what I'm doing. Um, Yeah, Josh right there, man. I mean, these are friends. And if we're not friends yet, eh, let's give it a little time. Uh, Hopefully, we'll get you out to one of these events and uh, we'll have a good time. Because anytime I go somewhere and I meet somebody that's, you know, a supporter of the show or whatever – that, that means the world to us, you know, and so it's awesome. And you've been able to bring so many people together on your side, man. That The event you guys did for that watch party was just bananas, man. Joe Staley, are you kidding me? That was yeah. cool, man. That was cool. Well, you talked about Kim and the Danish lads, and you've talked about our flag, which I've got behind me. Everybody loves the UK faithful flag. So in the gold mine, we did have some of the – Danish contingent and they have their own flag and I'll never forget that we were at the Golden Gate Bridge on the Monday after the Buccaneers game we were doing a bit of a daft victory Monday going live on Instagram and I got Kim and Thomas to pause with the flag and they were blown away John was like why are you blown away I want to represent any 49ers fan group that I can and like you said the, the Joe Staley so what I can share with you is me and Lee arrive at the sports bar Lee is obviously the president of the group. He's doing the meet and greet with Joe. I'm straight away whisked over to the corner and I have headphones on and I'm talking to you. And you're running through what Nick Clark wants, what we're going to do when the doors open. And I'll never forget what John said to me, everyone. He was like, it's quiet now, Paul. But when it goes live, if you can't hear a word that I'm saying, just run with it. And I remember thinking at the time, 
what on earth is he talking about? I can hear him fine. And then the doors open. Joe Staley welcomed every single person through that door, John. And then when the game started, obviously I went live with you. Couldn't hear a word you were saying. And when it settled down, there was a bit of a VIP <laughs> section, which we thought Joe was just going to disappear off to. Oh, no, no, no. Joe Staley was in the middle with the fans. He was pausing with the flag. When the game finished, they didn't finish the way we hoped it had. Him and his beautiful wife stayed right till the end until everybody left. And they were telling us how much they love the UK. They were blown away by the fact that there was 500 crazy British people <laughs> in a sports bar in London watching the San Francisco 49ers play the Cleveland Browns. So it was pretty awesome, to be fair. Thank you for those wise words, because when I watched that video back, I could not hear a word you were saying, buddy. It wasn't the best situation to record a live show, but our goal was, you know, the 49ers asked us to do that. And the goal was to kind of transmit the energy and the community and the vibe of what that event was like. Because you guys, and, and I got to give you props, man. People that are not in the States, it is a journey to get your content. Um, YouTube's been a huge, you know, advantage, I'm sure. But, like, the way in which, you know, I, I always ask you, like, how'd you become a fan of the 49ers? And, and whenever you hear those stories, it's just like, oh, that is awesome. Like, you had to overcome so so much. Um, I love it. Anyways, shout out to Red Jet in the chat, man. That's it. Like that's, 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 what's cool. And these stories, they're all unique, how we got here, but we're all here and we're part of the faithful. I love that you have that in your freaking name. That is as beautiful as beautiful. Yeah. I appreciate that, John. I mean, I did a live show last week where the horse was, where does the 49 faithful UK come from? Like you said, if you're faithful to the bear, you're faithful to the team and it's just something that's taken off and the support from yourself, the likes of Ty, I mean, got, 49ers first takes in the house. Oh, what's now, up, Baird? To be honest, normally I can get through all the comments, but I will just say to everybody, the fact that John's on the show tonight, I might not get to everybody's comments. But <laughs> I, I like I like your uh, your attitude there. Uh, good luck with that, man. And shout out to the community. And uh, that's the thing. Like they, they show up and they participate, and it's it, it helps the shows flow. It really, really does. It guides the discussion a lot of times. So keep those comments coming. Uh, we we appreciate it. So before we move on to draft talk, some of the viewers who were watching from your channel, they are spoilt for choice when it comes to, as you said, 49ers shows, 49ers content. And when we relaunched last year, John, the aim of the live was to do what it says on the tin, was to go live. I mean, I was prepping this afternoon for a day show. And then the Brandon Ayuk, I wouldn't say news, the fact that the Eagles have re-signed uh, one of their star wide receivers means it might have pushed the price up for Ayuk. And I just looked at Tracy and I went, this is what I'm talking about. There's always something new to talk about. So when we press live, I'm rolling with the punches sometimes. But what do you make of the uh, Eagles? Do you think they've reset the market or was it something you were expecting? You know, it's, it's funny because if you talk to 49ers fans about Devontae Smith, he just got a three-year extension, $75 million, uh, $51 million guaranteed. If you talk to 49ers fans about Brandon Ayuk versus Devontae Smith, and, and I would be in this contingent, I do think that Brandon Ayuk is a better player, and I do think that he will receive a little bit more money. But if you talk amongst the NFL fans, I think these two players are very, very similar in production. And in fact, their numbers are almost identical over the last three years, receiving-wise, stats-wise. But they're very close. Like, here's, here's how I would put it, and this is off the top of my head. If you ask 32 GMs to pick Brandon Ayuk or Devontae Smith, I think you'd probably get 20 to go with Brandon Ayuk and 12 to go with Devontae Smith, if that makes sense. Because they're two of the best separators um, on routes in the NFL. And you get the ball in their hands, and then it's just watch out. So this, this deal, and only more are coming. Like, like there are a lot of wide receivers that need deals. This is the floor it, because the way the NFL works is you're matched with the last contract that was done at the top of the position. And is Devonte Smith better than I, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying there's more similar than a lot of, a lot of other people say. And, and the longer you wait, listen to these names, CD lamb, Jamar chase, Justin Jefferson, T Higgins, Amon Ross, St. Brown. All these guys are in the same boat. Just like last year when it was D DK Metcalf 
it was AJ Brown, it was Debo, it, it was um, I, I don't know, I'm sure Miss Terry McLaurin, like that's right, yeah. And all those deals came in close together, and I, I think we're going to be see, seeing a similar thing. Now the Niners have been the team that says, "Let's wait, let's let the market clearly establish itself, and we're going to pigeonhole you in wherever that is." So Niners are not going to rush this, and they will probably be one of the last ones to sign their wide receiver. It's just the way they do it. So it's more information, more context to how this is going to be solved, but not necessarily more hope. <laughs> uh, not necessarily more hope. No, I mean, as I said, I'm one of the more plugged in fans in the UK. As in, I don't do other sports, John. I do the NFL. So when I say there's no off season, I truly mean it. And I remember the Debo scenario. I remember people on this side of the pond panicking a little bit in our Facebook group every day from like March to, to June till he signed was people panicking. And I'm seeing that kind of same sense of panic. And I'm thinking but we're not saving the Armstead money till June. Look at what they've done of the last four of the five superstars have signed. I am not panicking at the moment. And I wasn't going to direct you down the IU talk tonight. But as I said, seeing the fact that Smith has signed that deal today, I felt like we needed to touch upon it, especially for this side of the pond, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, because it, this is the difference between the Eagles and the 49ers. They want to get out ahead of and get these cheaper deals done before the market resets itself. They did the same thing with Jalen Hurts. Uh, you know, they've done like four extensions, two offensive linemen. Like they, they're already going through that process and getting those deals done. The 49ers are the opposite. They're going to wait till the end. Um, which one's right, which one's wrong. Yeah, I, I obviously I'd rather have Brandon Ayuk signed right now, but that's not where we are, and it's not where we're going to be. That's just not what's going to happen. Well, draft talk, John. I think these oh. people want us to get onto draft talk. Now, from watching your show, I know the draft is your baby. But before I put you on the spot and ask you some draft crushes and all the things, the rest... I know that your 2024 draft guide is out now. For context, I downloaded my copy at dinner time and I haven't scratched the surface yet, buddy. But I did want you to tell the UK faithful a little bit more about this because you'll do it more justice than I can and where they can get hold of it, basically. Yeah, so we put together a draft. Like, I'm a, I'm a coach. Like, that's my background. Film's my thing. And so I've been doing this for about eight years as a podcaster, but even before I started podcasting, like I would break down tape on these draft prospects and we'd be going through the tape. That's just what we would do. So we ranked 205 players. Uh, no players on our board that we did not watch at least two games minimum. Um, and we've got them ranked one through 205. And we, we established a NFL style GM war room big board where it's ranked horizontally, vertically. You can see all the first-round grades out there, um, all the positions, all the way down to undrafted free agents. And then we pair that with our draft book, which is you know about a page write up on every single player. And uh, spoiler alert, today um, we're going to be releasing a draft guide with graphics and all that kind of stuff. So the raw data we already put out there, and everybody has access to that. Um, but... We've got some draft companion things that are going to go with it. That's much more visually, you know, appealing and whatever else. And so I'm very excited about that. Shout out to PB Systems for their help with that. But if you want access to this, there's two ways you can do it. You go to the 49ersrush.com and you can join our site there. Uh, we have a free trial. So you, you ain't got to worry about anything. So if money's an issue, don't worry. You can go sign up. Free trial for a week. Download the draft guide and you can cancel. That's cool. If you don't have the money, we don't want your money. We want community, and we want to increase your draft experience so that you know these players. Now, if you do enjoy what we do, then hopefully you stay there and you continue to support the show. But if not, that's okay. That's not what we're here for. So our Patreon channel, you can just type in 49ers Rush, or you can go to the49ersrush.com. Those are the two ways you can get it. Yeah, so I'm flying the website at the bottom, John. Um, El Presidente has left me in charge. Now, now we're doing the basics. So um, as I've said on my shows... I wouldn't recommend anything that I don't use myself. And I know Brett Sinclair is in the house. He was probably one of the first to subscribe to your channel. I think it was more for the gambling tips than it was for anything else. But I'm glad to share that Brett pointed me in your direction. So I downloaded my copy earlier. 
And if anybody in the UK is unsure how to get hold of John's Guide, reach out to me. I'm known for being active on social media, so I have no problem sharing that, John. Now, I wanted awesome. to show you the love because I know how much work you've put into the guide. And I have to say, it's going to help me. I don't do a lot of college football, John, purely because it's on a Saturday afternoon here in the UK. And my good lady and the girls definitely put up with a lot with me doing the fight. Amazing family, by the way. It's always fun following you and your family on social media just because you can tell uh, it's just awesome, man. I, I really appreciate all that you share with us. Oh, no, thank thank you. Uh, I may be overshare. Tracy's definitely not one for social media. Now, I know we officially in draft season and a lot of people are doing the mock drafts. Now, I only started my mock draft season last week. I used to use PFF, but they've started charging for that, John. So I think you are a fan of doing a mock draft. How many would you say you've done so far? Man, not as much as people ask me to do, but I've probably done like five or six already, and I love it every time. And sometimes whenever I can't sleep at night, I'll get out the phone. I'm like, all right, let's just play. Let's play. Let's do some mock drafts. And so, and the funny thing is, I remember, I remember doing mock drafts in October because we were so bad in those Chip Kelly years and all that. Like, I remember doing mock drafts in October. Now we're in the Super Bowl. And, you know, the, the draft research window gets shrunk down, which is a wonderful thing. It's a great problem to have. But it is nice now that we have first-round picks. You know, it's the first time since that Trey Lance trade. And so this is fun, man. And I'm excited about this. Uh, this draft is going to be an entertaining one for 49ers fans. So the reason I've asked you that question is draft day for us in the UK is a strange experience because days one and two, I think the draft starts at 1 in the morning. So technically it's Thursday night, but it's like 1 a.m. So the first round pick, when we drafted Trey Lance, we had a Zoom call. But depending on which um, channel you were watching, there was a bit of a delay. So we had a bit of fun with Najee, who you met in the gold mine. So Najee was about Najee's two awesome. seconds behind the rest of us. And he was obsessed with us not trading up for Mac Jones and when it came oh. in the pick Lee Gowland mouthed to the camera it's Mac Jones and Najee's <laughs> face so we kind of looking forward to that this year because we're going to have another zoom call for oh the, nice the first round pick now what we're frightened of John is we're going to stay up till three four o'clock in the and morning they trade out and they trade out now I know that you have plans to watch the drive laugh drop the draft live at a sports bar in California, if I'm correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Champion Sports Bar down in Southern California, just outside of Temecula. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to be there live for days one and day two of the draft. So if you just type in Champion Sports Bar, Temecula, it pulls right up. Uh, and so if you can't make it out, you can join us on YouTube. We'll be live on this this channel or, you know, my channel, uh, 49ers Rush, and you can be part of the fun. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, so we are streaming on both channels today, but John has kindly let me have control. So I am trying to share some of the comments on there. Now, I know who some of your draft crushes are because I've been watching your shows. I have the notifications turned on yesterday. I was supposed to be doing some DIY in the kitchen. And oh, nice. And my good lady puts up with a lot straight away. There was a ping on my phone, and she was like, there's a show, isn't there? And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to put John's show on. <laughs> and the show you, you, you shared yesterday, she's like, I have no idea what you're listening to, but it looks like you're having fun. Now, pick 31, as it stands at the moment, John, we have got that. We haven't traded out yet. It's dependent on who you listen to. It depends on who you think we're going to take. Now, a lot of the fans seem to want an offensive lineman at pick 31. Where do you stand at this at the moment? Do you want an offensive lineman or is an, another position of need that you feel would be more important at this pick? You know, if you're looking at kind of roster construction and what the 49ers quote unquote need or don't need, I do agree with the mass, you know, fans. You need offensive linemen. How long is Trent Williams going to play? Colton McKivitz is not a long term answer. He's a good player. And he's not bad. Not a long term solution there. Our center. Jake Brindle's good player, not bad, not a long term, not a you know top level competitor at his position. So you always want those upgrades. So offensive line makes the most sense, but we got to remember 
This is Kyle Shanahan, and this is John Lynch. And so as much as you want offensive linemen, understand this is the same group that drafted zero offensive linemen last year and are bringing back the entire crew, the same crew that they had last year. All of them are back. Nobody left. So the 40, the, the 49ers brass is way more comfortable with this for, this offensive line than we are. I want to create the safest environment possible for Brock Purdy. So that's what I want. Now, the problem is you're picking at pick 31. This is one of the best offensive tackle classes in the history of the draft. And we'll have to see how it all pans out. But there's five clear-cut first-round draft tackles. They're going to be gone by then, and I hate that. And that's why I see right here, Josh, 40 irons faithful forever. D-line at 31 is probably much more realistic. And if I, I'm a betting man. Shout out to Brett. I saw him on here earlier. If I had to pick right now, I think it's going to be a defensive line pick at 31. It's not what I want. It's what I think will be. Um, but, yeah, I, I would prefer an offensive tackle or center there personally. Probably going to be a defensive lineman, though. Yeah, I had um, Alex Simpson, who was a member of our uh, 49er Fairful UK community on last week. And his bold prediction, John, was we were going to trade for uh, Buckner to replace Armstead. So he went down a different route of where the draft, and that's what I like about this time of year. The reason I mentioned that isn't to throw Alec under the bus. It's because Buckner has re-signed a deal. So it's looking unlikely that that's an option we're going to go down. And he said last week, Alec, we could spend hours talking about all these picks and positions. And then John and Kyle are just going to come along and go, defensive tackle. Yep. <laughs> D lineman. Now, the show you did yesterday, you piqued my interest about cornerback because when I look at our roster, we have seven at the moment. Now, when I say that, I know there's always room for improvement. You take out Mooney Ward, you take out Lenar. But you, you said something yesterday that got me doing a little bit more research. This is quite a heavy class for cornerback this year, isn't it, John? It's huge. You know, I've got four first round corner grades, but what what separates this class for the corners is the depth. I've got four second round grades. I have six third round corners. I've got four uh, fourth round corners. Like it doesn't matter where you're drafting. There are quality players that can be had. Now, the later you wait, as with any position in the draft and the difference between a first and a third round corner, there's question marks. There's age. There's health issues. There's all these different things, but the play style and that's still there. And so if you want a nickel, you want to keep Demo outside, there's guys there. If you want another outside corner, which the Niners seem to be stocking up on outside corners, they've got quite a few. We do not have a lot of nickels. And so nickel is a question mark and probably the least amount of depth. I mean, again, we had Logan Ryan starting in the Super Bowl. That is not a recipe for success. Now, he didn't play bad. He didn't play good either. But, like, you don't want that. You you want talent at all those positions. And this is a spot that the 49ers have out there about 78% of the time, almost 80%. We, we keep the nickel out there. So, personally, I think nickel is a very, very important spot. Now, I don't want to address that in the first round. Don't want to address that in the second round. But if you get down to the third round, there's some guys there. You know, if Andrew Phillips falls. Renardo Green, Chris Abrams Drain, DJ James, Kalen Carson, Nehemiah Pritchett. Like, there's a lot of guys that really fit what the Niners do. It, we've got to address that spot, man. I just, I, I, they have to. They just have to. Well, Lee Gowland will be uh, Winston. He's in, he's in the chat. So, as you know, Lee has a lot of love for Sammy Womack. So, he's a little bit nervous at the moment. So, when I listened to your show yesterday, I was like, Oh, Sammy Walmark could be writing on the well, wall. Well, let me say this. And I, Lee, plug your ears, okay? I love you. Flackers, plug them. Um, they decided, Jimmy Ward talked about this after he went with the Texans on a show where he said a couple years ago they decided they didn't want Samuel Womack to play nickel because they didn't think he was physical enough. I disagreed with that assessment. But the nickel coach during that time was Nick Sorensen who's now the DC. And so again, sorry, Lee, and I love you. And I, I'm one of the biggest Samuel Womack fans out there because I think he's the best special teamer we have. Um, he's, I, I think he's better than George Odom. I, I'm 
might be on an island on that. But it doesn't seem like Nick Sorensen is a Samuel Womack guy, and I hope I'm wrong. But if he was the guy that said, I don't want him playing my position, now he's the D.C., I don't like that. I don't like that. And I'm a huge Samuel Womack fan. Huge. Yeah, for, for your listeners, the reason we are big on Sammy is Lee announced the pick in Vegas. See, that's where we should have met for the first time in person, but I ruptured my blooming Achilles tendon and couldn't fly. So when I came on your show last year and you were like, yeah, I'm going to meet you in person, I was thinking, John Chapman is manifesting this. Now, do you believe, going back to the draft talk, dependent on who you listen, I know Larry Kruger is big on some of the names that I've got written down. Um, he thinks we should go for Zach Fraser, West Virginia, a centre. Love him. Some people are saying, should we go best player available? I'm kind of caught in the middle because you mentioned earlier doing the mock drafts. We remember what it was like without Kyle and John. We were doing mock drafts in September and October. Yeah. And you think of how far we've come as an organization. I tend not to worry about the strategy. I, a lot of my non 49ers friends, John, hit me with the trade lap, the Trey Lance trade. You know, you gave up all that. What did you get? The end result was still the same. And we're you, all you swing for the fences. I do not want a team that is comfortable with mediocre. I don't want that. I don't want a team that's going to sign Daniel Jones. I don't want, I want a team that's going to swing for the fences. And that is refreshing. Did the trade work out? No, no, it didn't. But that's not comfortable just winning division titles. You should want more. And man, you swing. I, I, I nothing but respect for that. So breaking news. El Presidente doesn't think Womack makes the roster oh. this year. So he didn't plug those ears, as you said, John. And Justin, <laughs> who is uh, based in Alabama, so give Justin a shout out. He's been a big supporter of ours. I know he's in the chats regularly on your show. And he's put that when we draft for need, it always backfires. We're not good at it. Just go best player available. Yeah, I mean, the Niners, it, it's funny because Ayuk was a hit. Ken Law, I, I don't think was, definitely not saying that. When we drafted McGlinchey, we had Trent Brown, but they decided they didn't want that. Uh, Bosa was a need, but, you know, that was a home run. So I, I don't know. I don't know about always backfires, but I do agree with you. It, the 49ers not, do not do a best player available in the first round. They don't. Their entire draft philosophy is we are addressing a premium position and a premium player. Now, I'm a big Zach Frazier guy too, Paul, and you brought that up about Larry Kruger. He loves him as well. They've never drafted a center in any round since Kyle Shanahan has been here. Never, ever. So the idea of drafting Zach Frazier the first round, probably not going to happen. Now, I could see something kind of like what happened with Aaron Banks where they're on the clock, they trade back, upset your Zoom show, and then, then take Zach Frazier. Uh, that is a possibility, but spending a first round on a center, it's hard to see that whenever you're looking at the clues from how they've drafted in the past. They're going after a premium position. Whenever I say premium position, top paid position because of the salary cap relief. You're talking defensive line. You're talking offensive line. You're talking wide receivers. You're talking quarterbacks. Those are the four. Cornerbacks not in that. Cornerback in the first round does kind of make sense. They do get paid like premium positions, but the Niners do not pay elite money to corners. We never have. Even if you look at uh, Mooney Ward, he's not getting paid top-tier money or even close to it. Like, that was a value deal on a projection base that hit. So, you know, I, I'd stick with those four. O-line, D-line, wide receiver, quarterback. Obviously, we're not going quarterback, so the wide receiver wouldn't shock me. O-line, D-line wouldn't shock me. No, so Neil Graham has joined from the UK. He says he's loving your draft knowledge and he will be listening intently for next week. That's because he's joining me on the 24th to talk all things draft. And I do owe Justin an apology. It's Oklahoma. Hey, Alabama, that is so. a huge apology because Justin, Oklahoma is a thousand times better than Alabama. And so I was out on Justin for a little bit whenever you said, I'm not an Alabama fan, but uh, Oklahoma, I'm not an Oklahoma fan either, but it's way better. It is See, way better than Alabama. My knowledge is getting better. So from listening <laughs> to your shows, you were talking about, I thought Breezy was going to go mad. One of your shows the other day, you were saying, oh, I'm sick of watching Michigan tape. Oh. And I don't like watching Michigan. And I thought, 
isn't Breezy a Michigan fan? And then obviously the advantage I have, John, of not being a massive college football fan is I can watch stuff without the emotion. When I was over last year, we went to Stanford versus Cal at Stanford. Now, I didn't realise that American sports fans can sit anywhere. There was no away and home fans. So we get into the stadium. Where the hooligans aren't over here too much. Now, if you go down to Alabama, they're there. But So <laughs> Lee Gowland had secured some awesome seats for us. It was my first ever live American football game. And we get into our seats and there was these awesome Cal Bear fans. And they're like, who do you support? And I was like, the 49ers. They're like, <laughs> no, you've got to pick a team. And I said, look, chaps, flown 5,000 miles for the 49ers get tomorrow. I just want to watch college football. And the beauty of it was, John, Every time Stanford did something good, which wasn't very often, I could high five the Stanford fans, but the Cal Bears fans, they were awesome. And I, I loved my first live experience of college football. Now, there's a name here that just didn't, I'm not good at pronunciation, believe it or not. So the faithful like to find these players. Now, is this a genuine draft crush or is this just someone winding me up? What do you reckon? No, Kieran, like I have a second round grade on him. Um, offensive tackle out of Yale, fun player. And, you know, it's funny whenever people talk about like, okay, the top five offensive tackles are gone. Like, and the 49ers do go tackle. Who do they go? And everybody talked about Marius Mims and Tyler Guyton. Those were the two guys that the community jumped on quick. I'm kind of out on those two guys, but the upside is there. Whenever I look at Kieran Armageggi, and I, I know I butcher his name. It's a, it's a fun name. 6'5", 323. He's got some of the longest arms in the draft. Like long, He's got 36 and an eighth inch arms. Mean, played at Yale, smart as hell. Um, I mean, he is just, I really, really like his upside. But he's got some injury history, and he played at Yale. So there's a couple question marks there. Do I think he should go in the first round? No. Should he go in the top of the second round? No. But if he's there at pick 63, and I think there's a strong chance he is, this is a developmental guy that could sit for a year and would be your left tackle Trent Williams replacement long term. And so I'm a big fan of Karen Army. I think I like him more than most people do. Um, he's just so mean and length, smart, IQ. Niners value all those traits. And somebody's going to take a gamble on this kid, and he'll either be starting in a year or he'll be out of the NFL. And so if you like those gamble type picks in the second round, that's what he is, but I'll bet on this. I'll bet on the player and I'll bet on the intelligence. Um, but you got to see that the health stuff checks out. That's, that's another one. Yeah. I mean, you were talking there about arm length and I'm smiling because I was watching Larry and Brad Graham last week and they were arguing over Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle from Arizona. Yeah. And Brad was saying to Larry, don't get hung up on his arm size. Go and watch the game tape. Now again, Tracy's going to kill me because she's watching downstairs. She was like, are they really arguing over some guy's arms? And I was trying to explain about, you know, how um, vital it is for the offensive lineman to be able to chop and block. And you made a good point there. Sometimes you have to go and watch the game tape and view it with your eyes. And what I like about your war guide, you've looked at it from 49ers eyes and you've done some comparisons and you've looked at it from, I mean, you were saying on your show yesterday, you've compiled wikipedia pages you've looked at high school grades that must have taken you some time to do all that research on those 205 players it's it's a trip man uh and i have to like be very very honest there are some amazing people that have like chipped in and just listeners that have said hey i want to help and uh, like awesome so i, I gotta give just a real quick shout out josh uh moss detler zach or ortiz oscar alfaro vince mansueto christian gomez like it was a team and it is a team but and they helped a lot with that research and so it, it does take time but th the cool thing about it is like and here's why we do it we, we did 205 players the niners might draft nine of these guys maybe less but whenever you're going through this process these players come to life and it's like what you said when you went to the Cal Stanford game. You don't know. You don't know these guys. You don't even care. But whenever you start to get to know them and you start following these players like Samuel Womack and you have this attachment and you learn these backstories, it, then it just turns into like, okay, 
I'm rooting for these these young men. And whenever you figure some of these guys' stories, like Ray Davis and going through foster care and living in cars and like everything that he's had to overcome, like, oh, it's just so easy to fall in love with these dudes to like support them and want them to be a part of your team. And so that's the whole idea it, bringing color and texture and familiarity with these guys that we don't know much about. So that when your team drafts them and you start to get some of those, man, I really wish we would have got this guy. Like, that's when it gets fun. And so I want a vested interest. And so hopefully the draft guide can kind of pull some of that out. Um, at least that's the idea. Yeah. So David has added that he loves the little nuggets that you add to each David's draft best, profile. Uncle Salty, I don't do Premier League. I honestly don't support. <laughs> I don't watch football in this country. I am all in the NFL. I sometimes dabble with a bit of ice hockey and I sometimes dabble with a bit of NBA. But if I'm not reading, listening or watching, I'm doing something with the family. So I'm just trying to catch up on some of the content comments. So Rick has added there that he seems like we're getting ready for the regular season. But yes. We're also getting ready for the draft as well. Yeah, and the players, they're they're you know, they're in phase two of offseason workouts as we speak. And so, you know, the coaches are getting to work with some of the guys and go through some stuff that are actually already on the team. So it, you're caught in this kind of dichotomy of contracts and workouts and draft. And so all these things go on at the same time. And like Paul said earlier, it never stops. It never stops. All it does is just keep going. That's it. And I love it. I love it. Well, to be honest, <laughs> I did sell the NFL to my good lady as a September to February spot. So she thought, oh, from February to September, John, I'll get Paul all to myself. And like you said, there's the draft, there's the free agency, there's training camp. Now, that is something that I would love to get out to one day. I've seen all the content creators going out to training camp and just being boots on the ground and being able to report back. And I just wanted to share before we move off, Mike has shared there that his family used to engrave the axe because I mentioned the Cal Stanford game there. Now, on this side of the pond, John, when we relaunched this channel, we did a segment called Would You Rather? Uh oh. It became very, very popular. So uh -oh. when we relaunched earlier this year, we decided not to do Would You Rather. But because there's been some pretenders to the throne, and because I know you're up for a good laugh, I decided to bring it back a couple of weeks ago. So that's right, Fearful. It's that time of the show for everyone's favourite segment, Would You Rather. Now, as we mentioned earlier, John, this time last year, you had me on your channel and you manifested that I would get to a game at Levi Stadium. And I didn't believe you. I'll be honest, but you have that in your back pocket. So when preparing for today's show, I thought, uh -oh. right. Now, we know the three NFL home teams for this year's International Series games in London, but we haven't had the road teams announced yet. Now, the Vikings are down to play a home game, which means the 49ers potentially could be a road team travelling across the pond. So my would you rather is very simply this, Mr Chapman. Would you rather correctly predict... The 49ers, one of the road teams coming to London, which would obviously mean you partying with those guys in the UK. Or, as it's officially draft season, you've put a lot of work into your draft guide. Would you rather correctly predict our first round draft pick this year? And I want to know which one you're picking and why. So I'm selfish. And, yeah, I, I'd like to get it right. And I've gotten, you know, first... I predicted the Trey Lance trade up. I predicted the Trey Lance pick. Like I was wrong, but I was right. Um, I want to go to London, man. Like I've been fighting for this international series. I went to Mexico for the, you know, the 49ers Arizona game at Studio Azteca with Wayne. We had such an incredible party, met so many great people, fell in love with the city. I was looking at real estate in Mexico city. Like it, like it took me one day and I was like, I, I can move here. Uh, I 100% would rather get that Minnesota, you know, game there and go hang out in UK. And shout out to Russie, uh, who's just like he was there in Mexico with us, had a great time. And now I consider him to be a great friend. 
um, you know, because we met at one of these events and he's about as fun person as possible. Um, and, and yeah, a hundred percent London. No, like, and I think too, because last year we played the Monday night football game in Minnesota. We went up there. So like, there's a chance. There's a chance, man. I want to go to the UK so bad. Yeah. So uh, Justin, there's a couple of naysayers, but I'll, I'll give them this. It's, I would say it's unlikely to happen purely because the Niners were one of the NFC teams that was reached out to about coming across as a home team. We do have the extra home game this year. And I do appreciate the team flying 5,000 miles across the pond isn't ideal. But when they announced the home teams, John, I put a tweet out saying, please come to London. And I actually got a little bit of hate for the first time since doing this content creating. People were like, we do not want the Niners flying across the pond. And, you know, from a team point of view in the traveling, I get it. But like you, selfishly, I've made the pilgrimage to Levi Stadium. Yeah. It would be awesome. I think the issue, uh, sorry, I, I think the issue is that you lose a home game. So the San Francisco based people, they lose a home game. But, but there's nine home games. So there's an extra one. And so now if you get to lose an away game, ooh, come on now. And the travel is killer. I'm not trying to say it's not. And I know the Niners would prefer to play in Mexico because it's just easier. It's, you know, it's not near as far a trip. And Kyle even said afterwards, he's like, you know, I always want to play home at all times. But if if I had any choice to play in any other place, Mexico City would be number two. So, like, that makes sense. But, man, it would be we would create so many more fans and and that's the thing that like gets me is you know we go to mexico city and you know it's pretty cool the international games because there's fans from all 32 teams there cuz they don't get to see a lot of games but when we left go through the airport and I'm talking to people whatever else new niners fans were created and that is just like ah like yeah, that is intoxicating man like the community is growing. More people care. And the next time, whenever we do go back to Mexico City or whatever else, it's just going to mean that much more. And then the same thing with London. Like, ah, I, I would absolutely love it. Well, I'll share this story with you before we, we, we finish off. So when we were at Pier 39 in November, we were staying at the Rui Plaza. And there was a Mexican gentleman and his wife. And as you can imagine, he sees all these red and gold <laughs> shirts. And he's like clock the accents and him and his wife were traveling to their first Niners game. They weren't quite sure how to get to Levi Stadium. You know what we're like. Me and Lee were straight away. We're like, you're with family. You're with us now. So they came with us. Obviously, we went off into the gold mine. And when I was preparing for this show yesterday and today, that Mexican gentleman has actually joined our UK Facebook group. And he posted a thank you message in the group. And he posted a picture with one of the group that he'd posed with. And like you said, we're all 49ers fans. At the end of the day, it's about this community that we're creating. Now, I'm just going to circle back. Mark, the guidebook is out now. If you do need more details, reach out to me or John. We can point you in the right direction. And we got asked a question. Now, I'm just going to get the comment back up. So, Uncle Salty, he wants to know, will we draft 10 players or will we trade away picks for higher profile prospects? What do you reckon, John? Well, th there's two John Lynches. There's early John Lynch, who tied the record for most trades ever, his first draft. Um, and then after the Trey Lance trade, and that didn't pan out, they kind of stopped trading. The last two drafts combined, they've traded once. And that was to trade up just a couple spots um, for Jair, Jair Brown. So... I think there'll be a little bit of moves. I, I'd probably put the over-under of trades at one and a half, um, and I'd probably bet the under. I think they want those picks. This is not the same team that we're used to back in 2022. The depth that the 49ers have on this roster is not elite. It's not even above average. We are not a depth team any longer. We were, but you couldn't keep those you know, backups because you're paying the top tier talent and that's the way the salary cap works. So you have got to start harnessing these guys for the future. So I, I think they're making nine picks. They need those players. They need these guys injected into, cause you know, I went through the whole roster after free agency and counted like the locks. I counted 32. I counted 32 locks. That's it. 
Well, 53 people make this roster. So your 10 picks, now you're at, you know, 42. You still got 11 more guys that are just special teamers or whatever else. So I personally think you need as many of those picks as possible. Now, if there's somebody that falls, that's just like, ah, if a tackle falls, trade up for him. One of those top five tackles, trade up for him. Nobody else. I'm not trading up, at least in the first round. I'm not trading up for anybody else except for those top five offensive tackles. Um, so I hope they I hope they stay put or trade back. I would prefer 11 or 12, personally. I want more. Yeah. So Mark is asking, where is the draft book? Now, you will know the answer. I struggled to find it at first, and then I remember you mentioned it in yesterday's show, but because we've got him, we might as well tell him. Yeah, so if you're on Patreon, it's pinned at the very, very top. That's easy. If you're on the 49ers Rush, just click on Player Breakdown, um, and it's right at the top there. If you're a friend of the show and that's the category you're in, click on Friend of the Show. It's pinned right at the top. So the same place you find all the video breakdowns that we do, that's where it is on the 49ersrush.com. If you have any issues, just email, reach out to me. I got you. I got you. So there's a few comments coming back to our Would You Rather, and you'll be a bit spicy. So, yeah, London was awesome last year. Um, I think Nick Clark and the fan engagement team, they've got quite a unique situation, John, where they're growing the fan base in the UK without bringing the team. Now, I'm going to give Nick his flowers before we finish off. He He's great. He's made me and Lee feel part of the team. He doesn't treat us as different to the organisation. He reached out to us early doors and said, we want to make this a success. And like you said, seeing Joe Staley in person last year, I never thought for a million years that last year I'd get to watch a game with you live, Joe Staley live. That was just, someone asked me the other day, John, what's been your favourite season as a 49ers fan? I was like, last year, without a shadow of a doubt, I think Lee is hoping to get to the gold mine again, but we're waiting to see when the schedule is released. And... I disagree with this slightly, Mark, uh, about the, <laughs> the UK. I love it. I love it. Purely because we've got the UK marketing rights. So I would disagree with that. But is there anything else that you want to touch upon before we finish off, John? Because I think I've gone through all my notes and I didn't want to keep you longer than an hour because oh. you've been gracious with your time. So I do appreciate that. You know, the, the thing that I always want to go back to, and maybe I don't do well enough, is just to remind everybody like, this is fun, right? And the draft is fun. And yeah, there's certain players I want us to draft. There's certain players I do not want us to draft. But at the end of the day, whoever your team goes with, however they do it, I'm not saying don't criticize, but just remember, this is supposed to be fun. And we are in the golden era of the 49ers over the past 30 years. Like you got I understand no Super Bowl titles. I get it. But I remember Chip Kelly. I remember Dennis Erickson. I, I remember those times. And we're not there. We have the, the best odds to make it to the Super Bowl again in the NFL. That's awesome. And we've got 10 picks. That's awesome. And so constant just reminder of context is important. There's 32 teams in the NFL, and no team in the NFL, probably outside of the one team that has Patrick Mahomes, would rather be where they are than our position. We are right where we need to be. This is supposed to be fun and exciting. And just enjoy this because – and there's going to be a time where the Niners are not guaranteed to make the playoffs every freaking year and guaranteed to go to the NFC Championship every year. There's going to be a time where you might be a wild card team or you might, you know, be picking in the top 10 again. So do your best to enjoy where we're at because this is a golden era. We just got to finish it. And, you know, we're so stinking close and I think we'll get there. But this is a good time to be a Niners fan. Well, I do really appreciate you joining us today. I am going to share. When you reached out to me last week, I thought you were inviting me to be a guest on your show. So Saturday morning, um, one of the group texts me and says, John Chapman's just shouted you out on his show and he's coming on with you on Monday. And I was like, <laughs> ah, John's coming on our channel. So I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm not, I'm not a smart person, uh, Paul, as you have probably learned firsthand. And, and I don't know the difference. Like, I'm just like, man, we're together. I, I'm happy, man. And I'm not good at controlling this thing. I just like talking. And so I, this is awesome. I, I really enjoyed this. This is a good time. Well, I did want to say we would love to have you back, but your ongoing support, not just with the shows. Um, I said it at the introduction, everybody. John does interact with us on social media. He's hosted live events for us. And, and that's all appreciated. 
I will be back, John, on Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. British Standard Time with our good friend Crystal Secure. So oh, she she's is the coming best, on man. to give some of her insights into the draft talk. Do please drop both channels a like and subscribe. This has been awesome. I have been Paul Hall. This has been John Chapman. And all that is left for me to say is stay safe and go Niners. We love the San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep Clark. Garrison Hurt, Stiff Farm,